Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to describe the operation of what's called a heat engine. So heat engines, some examples of heat engines. The motor in an automobile is an example of a heat engine or a uh, steam turbine is a heat engine or for that matter really a person can be considered a heat engine. Heat engines are devices that run off of temperature differences and they're used to produce mechanical work. All right, over on the right, this stuff right here, this is a schematic of how a heat engine typically works. All right, so this red box here where it says hot, this represents what's called the hot source for a heat engine. This yellow circle here is going to represent the heat engine. This uh, kind of blue box here is going to represent what's called the so cold source for a heat engine. And here's what a heat engine does. It extracts heat from the hot source. That's represented by this arrow labeled Q sub H. Q meaning the basically the variable for heat and H for the hot. And what the heat engine does is it takes some of that and converts it to work. And in the process, there's always going to be some sort of amount of heat that's given off back to the cold source. So in, in the uh, <clears throat> case of an automobile engine, the combustion of the fuel within the cylinder itself creates... Uh, the hot source and then heat is extracted from it. The uh, drive shaft turning and making the car go down the road, there's the work out and then all automobile engines will have some sort of exhaust. Heat will be given up from the exhaust to the relatively cold uh, environment. So in the example of an automobile engine, the cold source would be the atmospheric conditions around the car. Now over on the left I've got a super duper rough approximation of a PV diagram that's going to we're going to use to kind of describe a heat engine. And over on the right, I've got some equations from previous videos that are going to be kind of uh, important. So I'm going to go over those right now, make sure that we're on board with those. So the first one here, change in internal energy equals heat plus work. And this is this is known as the uh, first law of thermodynamics. Ideal gas law will be important. PV equals nRT. The Internal energy of an ideal gas is calculated by 3 halves nRT if the gas has uh, 3 degrees of freedom, 5 halves nRT if it has 5 halves degree of freedom, and 7 halves nRT if, it has seven, if the gas has 7 degrees of freedom. And again, um, if any of these you're unfamiliar with, you know, go back and uh, review the videos I've made about these. All right, so over on the left the PV diagram for a heat engine. Now, actual working PV diagrams don't look like this. Um, heat engines work on what's called a cycle. And in, in the world of PV diagrams, what that means is if you start here, you're going to end there. But the actual cycles don't look like the one I've uh, drawn. They typically look much more complicated, you know, maybe something like this. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to just look at a rectangular shaped cycle just to kind of look at the theory of how a heat engine works. So we have in this example I've made up here we are starting at state one we're at a P1 and a V1 on our PV diagram. Then the gas is going to um, <clears throat> have a pressure uh, jump up to pressure two noticing though that we're going to stay at the same volume. Then we're going to expand at constant pressure to a volume that I called V3 and V4 in this example. This would be position 3, this would be position 4, and in this example they would be equal. Then that gas is going to go back to its initial state, P1, V1. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of analyze the heat transfer terms and look at their directions and plus and minus signs, and we're going to look at the work terms for each part in the cycle. All right, so let's talk about from 1 to 2. Yeah, let's see here. So from, whoops. From 1 to 2, here's some important thing, an important thing to realize. The work term would be 0 because there's no area under the curve. Right? There's no change in volume. <clears throat> when we look at the first law of thermodynamics, that means the change in internal energy is equal to uh, heat plus work, but we just got done saying that the work term is 0. So the change in internal energy is equal to the heat transfer from 1 to 2. Now, looking over to the right, 
we know how to calculate the internal energy of an ideal gas. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to just assume a monatomic ideal gas, which means it would have three degrees of freedom, which means the internal energy of this gas at any given time is given by this relationship right here, three halves nRT. Now, again, this is going to be kind of a conceptual video. We're not going to actually do any calculations, but here's an important thing to realize. If we have this point on the PV diagram, that means we have a P and a V. Therefore, by the ideal gas law, we would in theory have the temperature. If we know the temperature, we also would know the internal energy. Therefore, the internal energy change is something that we could calculate, and it's going to come out positive because we're at a higher temperature than when we started. And again, uh, remember what isotherms look like. And if you don't, you know, if you're unfamiliar with the term isotherm, I would suggest you go back and look at my video about isotherms. So, isotherms on this picture look something like this. Here's an isotherm. Here's an isotherm. Here's an isotherm. So remember on PV diagrams, anytime you move in this direction or this direction or any way, anywhere in between, you're moving towards higher temperature, guaranteed. So when we go from 1 to 2, we're guaranteed to be moving towards higher temperature, which guarantees the change in internal energy is positive, which guarantees a heat transfer into the gas. So I usually represent those with arrows, Q12. And in theory, these could all be calculated. Now we're going to take a look at what's happening from 1 to 3. Now, let's talk about work. There is work being done. Work on a PV curve is equal to area under the curve. So that would equal this area right here, all of it, all the way down to uh, the axis here. In magnitude, that area would be equal to pressure 2, and then times, I'll just put um, V4, uh, V4 minus V2, I guess it would be. V4 minus V2. Now, that would give the magnitude of the work done from 2 to 3. And that would be this area right here. Now let's talk plus and minus signs. This gas is expanding, and when you're dealing with the uh, work done on a gas, the work is positive when the gas is compressed, therefore negative when it expands. So I'm just going to put a minus sign here to indicate that that work term would be negative. Now, <clears throat> we are also moving towards a higher isotherm because we're moving to the right. That guarantees that the temperature is going up, which means the change in internal energy is also going up. And when we write out the first law of thermodynamics, whoops, used a different term there for internal energy, change in internal energy is positive. When we write out the first law of thermodynamics, which says change in internal energy equals heat uh, plus work, taking note that this is positive as we go from two to three, because we're heading towards a higher isotherm, the work term is negative, that guarantees a positive heat transfer term. So the heat transfer from 2 to 3 is in this direction. Q, I'll put 2, 3. Again, I don't have to calculate a value to know that. You know, just conceptually, from 2 to 3, the gas is expanding. So its temperature should have went down, but it didn't. It moved towards a higher isotherm. So what had to have occurred from 2 to 3 is we had to have another heat transfer to the gas. And that heat transfer from 2 to 3 had to be larger in magnitude than the work done from 2 to 3. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at now 3 to 4. So from 3 to 4, the work term is 0 because there's no area under the curve from 3 to 4. By observation here, I can tell we're we're moving towards a lower temperature because again this is what isotherms look like I'll draw one in this picture that's what an isotherm looks like so if you're moving down you're moving towards a lower isotherm so by the first law of thermodynamics we would have change in internal energy equals heat plus work but we just observed that this term was zero no area under the curve 
and the change in internal energy has got to be negative because we're moving towards a lower isotherm. That means the heat transfer had to be out of the gas from 3 to 4. So I would call it maybe Q34. Right. Now, from 4 to 1. From 4 to 1, this gas is being compressed. Its temperature should go up because when you compress a gas, the work done on the gas is positive. But this, in this example, we're moving towards a lower isotherm. Again, if I draw some of these isotherms, you know, there might be one that goes through 4 like this and another one that goes through 1 maybe like this. And this second one that I've drawn is a lower temperature isotherm than the first one. So from 4 to 1, we know that the change in internal energy is negative. And we know that the work is positive because the gas is being compressed. So when we write out the first law of thermodynamics, which says change in internal energy equals heat plus work, taking into account we know that the work term is positive and we know that the change in internal energy is negative, that means the heat transfer term has to be negative. So that heat transfer is out of the gas. I'm going to call that Q41. So basically, at least in this example, by observation, you can tell the heat transfer terms, whether they're into the gas or out of the gas. Q12 and Q23 were into the gas. If I relate that back to my... Um, picture here of this working heat engine or this model of a heat engine that would be telling me the Q sub H. In this example my Q sub H would be the sum of these two Q23 and Q12. Q34 and Q41 are out of the gas. As far as my heat trans or my uh, heat engine model is concerned that would be this the Q sub C. Okay. All right <clears throat> Now, work terms. From 1 to 2, there's no work done. From 2 to 3, there's a work done equal to pressure 2 times the difference in volume here. And I'm going to go ahead and color that area here. So the work done from 2 to 3 is given by this area. And that work is negative because the gas is expanding. From 3 to 4, there's no work done because there's no change in volume. From 4 to 1, the work done is equal to this area, and that work term is negative because, whoops, I'm sorry, that work term is positive work done on the gas. So when the gas is expanding from 2 to 3, the work is negative. When the gas is being compressed from 4 to 1, the work done is positive. The net work done is the sum of these, which geometrically is equal to the area of this rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and color that in something kind of cool here. How about uh, green? So this green area right here, I'll just put the green area here gives the net work done on the gas. The energy transfer going in is the Q sub H, which is the sum of Q1 and Q3. So I'll put Q sub H is equal to Q12 plus Q23. And heat engines have what's called an efficiency associated with them. Efficiency is output over input. In this example, the output is the net work done by the gas, which is the bound area uh, within the PV curve or within the cycle curve. And then the energy input is the Q sub H. Right. And I think I'm going to just leave this video off right here. I just kind of want to go over and hit the highlights again in overview. So heat engine. What they do is they extract heat from a hot source, convert some of it to work, they give up heat to a cold source. So in the case of an automobile engine, the Q sub H is coming from combustion of fuel. The work effectively is the car going down the road. The Q sub C would be the exhaust carrying heat to the environment. 
on a PV diagram, heat engines work in, in what are called cycles. If you start at, you pick any place on the PV diagram, you will, you know, move around the PV diagram. If it's a heat engine, you'll move in a clockwise fashion and end up back where you started. Any, during parts of that process, you'll have heats going in. During other parts, you'll have heat transfers going out. The sum of all the heats going in is equal to the Q sub H. The sum of all the heat transfers out is equal to the Q sub C. The net work done by the cycle is the area bound within the cycle on the PV diagram. In this case, that's my green scribble. And the efficiency of the heat engine is the work out divided by the heat in. And I think that's enough for uh, this, uh, this video. I think I'll go ahead and make some more up with some examples. Hope that helped uh, link PV diagrams to uh, uh, heat engines and how they work. Have a great day.